afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Getting In, a College Coach Conversation. Uh, it is a very rainy day here in Massachusetts. I'm not sure if you can see out my back window there for those of you who are watching this on video, but uh, our stay-at-home order was just extended. School is officially called off through the end of the school year. Uh, and basically, it's just more of the same from what we've been talking about every week for what feels like, oh, I don't know, like two years or so now. Um, but life does go on and getting into and paying for college is still part of your lives if you're listening to this uh, podcast. So um, we know you have a lot of questions and we have a lot of answers. So we're going to be spending uh, the bulk of today's show answering your questions. But before we get to all of that, um, we're going to be talking to this year's group of seniors and senior parents. And I have to say that my heart goes out to all of you. Obviously, there are a lot of really serious things going on uh, in terms of people getting really sick, people dying. Um, but that doesn't mean that it isn't sad to have things like your graduation, your prom, all of those other, your entire spring sports seasons, all of these things are meaningful and you haven't gotten to do any of them. And so I do feel badly for you. Uh, those of you who have settled on a college, we did want to talk to you today about what happens next. And for that, I am pleased to welcome my colleague, Kimberly Aselta, who is a former admissions officer at both College of the Holy Cross and Babson. Hi, Kimberly. Hi, Beth. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. And thanks so much for being here today. Um, I wanted to basically, we know that there are actually many students who are listening who aren't sure yet what they're going to do next year. And this segment is not for them. <laughs> this is for those who have settled on a college, they've sent in their deposit, they are committed. They don't know what that's going to look like yet, but they're committed to it. Um, and so I guess my first question for you is, what now? You know, you committed to your school, so what now? Right, what now? I would say right now, celebrate. Congratulations, right? Like take a deep breath. This is such an exciting time. Yes, we don't know what this is going to look like and it's a little different than last year's senior class, but take a breath, be proud of yourself, buy that sweatshirt, stick the bumper sticker on the back of the car. Remember back to back in the 90s when I made my final decision, it was a really big deal to stick that sticker in the, in the window of my parents' car. So do those things. Uh, take, a, take some time to thank your supporters, the team of people that helped you get to this point. So I'm sure your teachers would love to hear a thanks and love to yes. hear what, you know, what the decision was that you ultimately made your college counselor, your parents, you really think about those people that helped you get to this point and maybe you know, thanking them would be nice as well. But you know, be proud of yourself, engage with this decision and, and really celebrate it. Yeah, right absolutely. Now. I mean, as much as you can, right? And so maybe you can't go anywhere with the sticker on the back of the car, but you could drive <laughs> around. <laughs> with the sticker right. in the back of the car. You could take a picture of it and post it on social media if you want to. Um, you can make a decision that you're going to wear this sweatshirt every day until this is all exactly. out, so long as you wash it. And even then, maybe you don't care about that kind of thing. Maybe the people who live At with this you. Point. <laughs> right. Exactly. All bets are off. I'm all fancy today. And for those of you who can see me, I have on a, Kimberly's wearing earrings. I have yes, a big, big thing. necklace and... You know, we're finding ways to express ourselves however we can. Um, exactly. What about, there's definitely some administrative stuff. Um, so can you run down a little bit of what's involved with that? Sure. Right. So after all the celebration is, is said and done, there are a couple of things that you still need to tie up. So you're still going to be responsible for sending your final transcript to the school that you have chosen. You, COVID or no COVID, we would say, finish the year strong, whatever yes. that looks like now, if that's a pass, if that's a credit, great, if it's an actual grade or letter grade, just making sure that you finish your academic year strong, uh, that would be important. Um, any school that, or the school that you chose may have allowed you to self-report scores, SAT or ACT, you might need to officially send those. So just tying up all of those loose ends, 
taking your AP exams, and then sending those AP scores if you want college credit. So there just are a few things uh, that the students need to worry about, uh, students and parents perhaps paying that first tuition bill when it comes in, uh, you know, just being aware that you need to have a couple of things to, to finish up. I'd also say make sure that you continue to check your email, the email yes. that the school has. So just because you paid and you're enrolled doesn't mean that you're not going to get email. You're going to probably get more email now. So making sure that you keep up with engaging with the school that you've now decided to be part of that community. Yeah, I mean, so much of next year is really up in the air where every day you hear a new announcement that essentially says, we don't know. <laughs> so one of the ways in which the colleges are likely to, um, to engage with you is definitely via email, via the portal. So if there's a student portal, I would even go so far as to say, make that part of your daily routine seven days a week. Get into that portal, check your email, make sure there isn't any news, make sure there isn't anything you're missing. Um, if things are really in array, a disarray at your, in your local school, things like that, I do feel um, and believe that colleges are going to be very understanding. So, yep, you're gonna need to get them your final transcript whenever that is available. Right. It may not be available when it normally is, and the colleges are gonna understand that they're gonna work with you. Um, so I think great advice there. And it may be that, uh, you know, that piece is a little up in the air as well around what will tuition be? So are you gonna be paying for room and board or just for tuition? If you are just paying for tuition, will there be any kind of a break on the tuition? Um, these are gonna be decisions made by the individual colleges. So more and even more important for you to remain engaged with them so you understand not only what are you paying, when are you starting, when are those pieces due? Um, and never forget that it's okay to ask. So if you, the school really wants your transcript by the end of June and your high school is saying, there's no way you're gonna get that until the end of August, pick up the phone and ask the college and explain the situation and they will help you figure out a solution, always. Absolutely, right. The, the colleges right. want you there, right? So exactly. th they're gonna work with you, but well, sorry. They're gonna work okay. with you. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, and, and that communication is a really important piece for these very important pieces of the next couple of steps, but also to stay engaged, social media, join that Facebook, the incoming class Facebook yes. page, right? Join that. Um, engage with your the fellow students and peers in that incoming class. I know that that's usually how students are finding roommates and and already coming to campus with a few people that they've connected with. So making sure that you still continue to do that. If there's an orientation, whether that's a virtual orientation or you know, fingers crossed that's something that happens on campus, signing up for that, you know, those things should still be part of your plan. Right, absolutely. And so in thinking about what might be different, um, what are some suggestions you have for preparing for that part of things in as much as we right. can prepare, right? Right. We, we don't know what, it, what your fall semester might look like. Um, I think it is important to have a plan B and to know that this might be different. Even if you're on campus, campus might be very different than when you were visiting last spring and taking a tour. There, there might be differences in the dining hall and residence hall, uh, even in you know, activities like Will those big football games happen? We don't know what that's going to be like. So preparing yourself for that um, is going to be really important. I would say for parents listening too, we talk a lot at this point about getting ready to let go, getting yes. ready to change your, um, your status as your child's manager to, to more of a consultant position. Mm -hmm. What's that going to look like if your student is not leaving the house, right? Right. <laughs> if, if, if college looks very similar to the end of high school, setting some boundaries, having your student understand what your expectations are, communicating within the household, um, and really thinking about what your student and what your parent position is going to be if college ends up being, at least for the first semester, virtual. Right. I mean, we talk a lot about developing some adulting skills, right? So if you're not already doing your laundry, which you're not doing your laundry yet, but if you're not, now would be a great time for you to start developing that skill, for you to be responsible for changing your sheets on your bed and washing them, 
because hopefully you will do that when you are in college. Um, right. And, and as you say, as a parent, changing a little bit of what you would do and maybe um, relinquishing some of that maybe intensive policing that you've been doing and allowing your student to have some space. Um, a story I love to tell is my first, um, when I went away to college, my parents absolutely had the attitude that, okay, you are now in college and so you are much more of adult and so the rules that applied when you were in high school were are not in place when you come home from college well my very first trip home from college i went out with friends the night before thanksgiving came home at three o'clock in the morning and forgot my key so my father had to come down and let me into the house and what i have always really appreciated is that there were no repercussions. I was fine. I wasn't, it, I wasn't out late because I was doing things I shouldn't have been doing. I was just visiting with friends. Um, the next day, no one even mentioned it. Then I just never forgot to bring my key again. But obviously, these are not situations that you may find yourself in because students may not be at school. But what are ways in which you can kind of make that shift from what you expected when your student was a high school student to what you expect? now that they're a college student? And, right. and are there changes that you can make with that in right. mind? Absolutely. Right? Yeah, and I, I think um, a couple of other things that I might add it are just, um, you know, I don't know what it's like, Kimberly, for you, you have um, two sons who are home from school. I have one teenager home from school and a stepson. We've kind of just been haphazardly, he goes into his room and it's time to do work and we just kind of are, figuring out as we go, my husband is working from home, I'm working from home, sometimes we have four adults in this house. But if your student is gonna be starting college from home in the fall, maybe be more intentional about that, right? Creating a space um, where they can do work. Is there a separate room in the house that you could turn into, in essence, your student's office? Right, right. Um, you know, maybe boost the internet. I don't know if you guys are having internet <laughs> issues where you are, but we're challenged here. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Coming up with the schedule. I think communication is going to be huge as well. I know even just this morning, I needed to say to everyone, I need an hour to prepare for my meeting at noon. And I was getting frustrated and realized they don't know what I'm doing. Right. They don't know what I'm doing with my computer in front of me. So just that communication and, and setting those expectations, I think will be helpful. I was also thinking, and, and this might be crazy, but a big rite of passage for me when I was going to college was going shopping with my mom to buy that new comforter and all of those things for my dorm room. I mean, maybe you do that too. Maybe you continue, you buy those things and you redecorate the room. That's all those things that you would then be able to bring to the dorm right. later. But really say, ma making that mark that this is not the room that you grew up in, right? right. This, is, this is now your dorm room and, and respecting that too. Just I, again, that just came to me. And I imagine that as families sit down and think about these things, they might be able to do a little bit of um, you know brainstorming around how do we make this not just a continuation, not the 13th year of school, right? right. But, but something special and different. Right. How do you make it feel different? I think that's great advice. Um, and yeah, I, I think one other thing is that, as we have mentioned earlier, is we really don't know, right, what's going to happen because colleges are still making their plans. Um, any thoughts about that um, in terms of, you know, students now? Yes, I was thinking, you know, we saw an article that came out um, this week about Stanford saying that they were going to include a student input in the decisions that they make. They were sending out a student survey. Now they have a whole host of people that are going to be part of this decision, but they are including some of what the students say. Now, yes. be involved if you can be. I don't know how much they're going to involve the incoming class, but you guys have a say. You are now a part of that community. So make your voice heard be part of this decision if that is if that invitation is offered again being part of the community how do you want it to look how what do you, how do you feel about this uh will be part yeah of absolutely. some of this decision exactly I, I think one other thing that just comes to mind for me is that um when I went away to college, because already it's so long ago, I didn't meet my roommate before I got there. There was no such thing as social media. We didn't talk on the phone. I just kind of showed up and, oh, hi, nice to meet you. There's my, my new uh, roommate. Nowadays, 
um, you're able often to connect with that person before you ever arrive on campus. So maybe you can work on developing a relationship with that person. Maybe you, if you are in, online in the fall, maybe you and your roommate connect even as little as once a week just to say, hey, how's it going? And I have these things for our dorm room and I was thinking we might want this. And so that when you are back at school, you already have a relationship um, and it doesn't feel like you're with a stranger despite having been in college for a semester. So, right. Absolutely. you know, things like that. And so look for opportunities. Are there groups that are forming? Maybe it starts on Facebook, but moves to other social media platforms that your generation is more comfortable with. Obviously, Facebook is the platform of your parents or your mom in some cases, right? So maybe you're gonna move off of that, but looking for those opportunities to connect with people so that you have some relationships already by the time you get to college. Absolutely, and that, that even goes for academic advisors, if they're reaching out yes. as part of that, right? Um, I could see, students sort of saying, well, you know, I'm, I'm at home, I don't need that. But yes, if, if those things are being offered, absolutely reaching out to professors, engaging in the class like you, you would if you were in person, joining clubs, like you said, right. anything to make that transition when we do get back, because I do believe we're, we'll get back at some point. Uh, to make it feel like you are a part of that community. Right, absolutely. And things like registering for classes, maybe that already takes place online, but you meet with your advisor before you do it. Um, so again, there's no reason you can't meet with your advisor via phone or via platform like Zoom or Skype and then do your online course registration. And so you need to take advantage. These are all the things you're paying for. So take advantage of them, even if they are remote. And it, like you say, it feels like, well, maybe that's not necessary. Kimberly, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. All right, we're gonna take no a short problem. break. That, um, and um, congratulate your family on staying out of the room while you were doing this too. So, um, and we're gonna take a short break. And when we come back, Shannon Vasconcellos is gonna be here and we're gonna answer your questions. So don't go away.